Khan started distributing it. And then one of the school, they came back and said, thanks for giving this. These books are wonderful. I just don't stop with that. Then they said, the kids don't read. And it was actually funny for us because they first said that they don't have a library or they had a library and the books got washed out. And so we started uh, buying these books and they said, this is wonderful, but the kids don't read. You know, that was, uh, and so we said like, uh, why? And they said, no, best that what we can expect from the kids is like they see the pictures. And it's good that you've given a lot of books, so your books are colorful with pictures and so on. But then they just, you know, flip through the different pages and see the pictures and move on because the uh, TV is more powerful. You know, and some of these schools were also residential schools, you know, particularly for people uh, who are single parent kids and so on, so who are coming from the ICWA. So some of these schools were also like these residential schools, or they call us transit schools. Some of the schools were transit schools. Uh, where, um, you know, the children were dropped out from education because they got into child labor and so on, and they got rescued and put back in school. So these are the kind of schools that we were going and supporting, and they said that they can't read, they get attracted with TV, they get attracted with media, which is good. I mean, TV is also good, and you can also use it effectively for learning, just like the way that you use digital infrastructure for teaching and engaging with young children in e with the Loka. Uh, we thought we should do something about, uh, you know, making this book. And we were researching a lot on, like, what other countries do. We were curating. I mean, I, I wouldn't call it as researching. It's all Google searching, I should say. So we were actually searching a lot and see that what type of programs exist in the world. So we picked up from Reading Rockets in the U.S. You know, so it's a very, very powerful program. So uh, we went through the structure of how to do language learning app and through reading and so on. It was very, very inspiring. But none of that, actually, we could take it and lift and drop and use it in our context. Because one, our teachers, you know, you can't refer them and say that this is the framework, this is the methodology and so on. They wanted it in the local language. And they also wanted it in the local context. So that's how the whole exercise started. We said, okay, fine, we'll go with the bag of books. Every weekend we used to go with a bag of books and say that we became storytellers and story readers and not just telling the story. We first tell the story more for immersion, immersive listening. And then we also encourage the children to read, and slowly the story started. So that's uh, that's that's actually the background story of, you know, how we started the whole journey. So when we went into the first year, I still remember one of our partner, Handy Nand, which who runs this transit schools, again for all these uh, uh, child uh, children who are rescued from you know, child labor and then the children on streets and so on. So when we went there, you know, we met with our board of trustees and management and told that what is the power of storytelling? How actually story can be so engaging for encouraging children to read and learn? How stories can be so encouraging uh, to kind of, uh, you know, like also nurture the values and so on. But I still remember that what that management person told me, Ms. Mangala, who's been a very, a, a, a very senior educator in education space a lot. She said, more importantly, I want an opportunity for my kids to emote, share their feelings. Because these are kids like who are coming from a completely difficult background. And uh, if you, and actually that made us think a lot. You know, even our bedo, bedtime story time. Of course, we did learn, you know, the interest to pick up a book and read and so on. But more importantly, uh, the, the soothing, uh, the calmness that it actually you know, brings, you know, some uh, elder at home telling the story or, you know, like as a parent that when we tell the stories, oh, we can actually put the child easily to sleep and so on. So that is the power of, you know, getting them into a very soothing environment very quickly through a story or getting them so energetic and getting getting them very excited by another adventurous story. So all that emotions that go along with us, so that is very, very important. So we just came back and felt that, yes, that you know, this is what we should do with stories, and we started. And that's how the story of the entire Ratha started. So just, I am moving on to my, I've started presenting it now. And so we started with a vision, okay? Uh, we definitely wanted the children to have the passion to read, passion to learn. But many of the children are struggling to read, not because they don't have a passion, they're not adequately equipped to read even a book on their own. I mean, how long that we'll be teaching in lecture mode or in interactive mode, the children have to be, you know, the, the entirely a new world of knowledge open up once they start reading on their own. It is first if they learn to read, then they can read for their continuous learning lifelong. So that's that's been our motto. So we said, you know, we should make them first learn to read so that they can read to learn through their life. 
So we need to instill the passion and we should also build that confidence. And the confidence will only come if they have the necessary skills. And instilling the passion and confidence for reading and learning. So that became our motto. And of course, it's based on a very strong foundation of human values, not necessarily attached to any religion, but we pick it up from Pratham's story. We were most of our story. So all the values that were imbibed in those stories you know, naturally became our foundation. And we didn't want to stop by just making these children read and comprehend. One of the very important 21st century skill, and of course, it's always been a skill, it's, but it's even more, the need is so even more important is um, to make them think critically. I mean, because, uh, yes, you know, we can literally say that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but then what it means, why is that metaphor used? And, you know what it means and so on so you need to think beyond that you know that way that you can even get fancied by all the stories the coca-cola ad and other things comes you know like you or the different drinks cool drinks that you drink and then you can jump from a mountain top and so on so people the children should be able to think beyond the text so the critical thinking how we can nurture and how we can actually use story as a medium to nurture the critical thinking and of course story is a natural medium to unleash uh, the creativity of the children so this is what became our vision and the goal, and that's how we started. And uh, so now uh, I'll, uh, you know, like uh, quickly kind of uh, probably run through, uh, this is the background story to the story of the KOR itself. Now, this is our stories. This is our Katha. And it's not been a, what do you say, like, you know, it's a smooth journey all the time. We had a lot of stories of grit and, of course, a lot of inspiration. And there were stories that were, you know, which made us really uh, you know, feel so bad and, demotivated at times but then there are many stories which kind of sufficiently compensated to get us back and bounce back with a lot of inspiration so that's the story and get ready to walk okay so this is how we tell our story um it's been a journey of a lot of learning and let me start with why as we say that it's a lot of learning first when we said that okay we should start and take me to the school obviously as Two volunteers as we started, you know, like you, uh, we started with a big bag of books and going in the weekends and training the teachers and so on. We can't reach out to many schools. So we said from day one, we will go via the teachers. So the teachers or the volunteer teachers or whoever is appointed as the teacher or facilitator or a coach in the school, they will play the role of a reading coach or a learning coach. So that's our number one, you know, like the method that, that we said, okay, this is our goal and initially we did have difficulty you know people said that you know like this language is difficult for us we said no it's bilingual so you can actually start telling the story start reading the stories first in your vernacular language which is you're comfortable with but this is the pedagogy and it's not that we kind of post it in any pedagogy we asked them naturally to do and was kind of coaching it was more in a discussion and exploratory workshops format on how to go about and engage the children using a story and make them read and learn so that's how we started with and we learned a lot. I mean, even now, I would actually give it to a lot of teachers in the HAH where the creative crafts that they were doing to demonstrate each story, the moment the stories and the colors actually, that started unleashing the creativity of the teacher. They started making beautiful teaching aids with, you know, a butter, all the words about a butterfly story within the shape of a butterfly, things like that as a big wall display and so on, or whether it's a villupatu or whether it's a shadow puppet, so they really, literally, like, you know, uh, it was mind-blowing. And um, what we really learned from that is, like, many a times, many of our education initiatives, I, I know that they also work in foundations. So a lot of these initiatives and technology, we try to take it to the children, bypassing the teachers. If our teachers are the linchpins, and they are the most, because they are the people who can humanly connect to the children. I mean, teachers are volunteer teachers. And you cannot go back directly. I mean, I have high regards. I come from a technology background. I come from high regards and I do love technology. I have high regards for some, you know, applications like Baidu's and Khan Academy. Definitely, yes. But then a human form of engagement is important for the overall growth of the children. It's not just about the concept that they need to learn. So we felt that we learned a lot from all these human interactions. There were a lot of stories which the teachers started sharing, saying that how after a particular story the child started emoting and coming back and talking about a past life which was completely abused and so on so these are the kind of uh, stories which made us really feel that yes if we empower the teachers you know with more tools you know like that it's kind of in our auto role mode and we don't have to do much 
So we definitely felt very strong. The teachers need to be empowered to bring in the transformation in the school education system. So that's that's our first learning in our journey. So that we picked it up. And second is uh, we started initially with you know like taking from reading. We were referring many things and passing on, saying you pass, you look at this, you look at Pratham books, you look at this one. Then we realized that actually teachers know a lot. Okay, and they all want to be part of the cooking. I mean, you can't do a cooking and then say that. This is my, you know, like a nine-course meal and have it, and they need to be part of the making. So unless they are part of making this journey and crafting the journey, so that's something that we learned. And a lot of best practices started coming in. They started coming in, telling that this is the way that, you know, for example, I still remember again from H I H story that when they introduce letters or when they introduce numbers, well, before they introduce a letter A or A as a sound, a phonetic sound, they'll tell a story about that. Or you know, like with every letter, so we started picking it up from there, and we started writing stories at the letter level for symbols, and uh, for every sounds, and then for every words to introduce, and every grammar concept. So started building from that. And once we curate these best practices, you know, then we can take it to our remotest villages, towns, and cities. Today, we've reached about ten thousand um, children, but it's kind of you know in multiple districts in all remote rural villages. So that's. That's where it's gone, and of course, yeah, you know, we don't have a technology. What we, the best technology that we use is actually WhatsApp, because we engage with teachers using WhatsApp, uh, and we, even today I've known that we have a story session for them. We read a book, we write books, or we make teachers write stories and share stories, and so on. And then it's not doesn't stop with the story. How to engage around a story book, and that again that you know, we ideate uh, as part of these workshops. So we, the best is WhatsApp, but otherwise we physically travel to that. And of course, I know you with your I know uh, I've heard wonderful stories about how you have used uh, technology to the best. And then we share, make each one of them share. You know, each teacher share, and experiment. I would say that it's we always believe in uh, treating this as a perpetual experiment because we learn a lot. We keep learning a lot, and we have close to about twenty different partners and close to about one hundred and fifty reading coaches that we have for each of these ten thousand students, and all that is. The partnership is critical. From the day one, we are a very, very small team. Of course, we started with and for two volunteers, and then it became five volunteer mentors. That I, I mean, apart from me, there are four volunteer mentors. And there's a very small team, a four-member team. Kannan was joined today. That he is actually leading the entire implementation. He himself is a founder trustee of a free uh, charitable school, uh, completely free school running in a village in a suburb of Chennai. It's about 15 years old, and I'm also. Part of that school now as part of the trust and management. So we have that experience of running this school for 15 years, and we know how it takes to teach the rural children. And we recruit the teachers from rural because that's when the bonding is better, and they stay back in the school. The language had always been difficulty, so to making the children read, and uh, of course we were quite confident in making, quite comfortable in making them read in Tamil. And uh, making skits and plays and makes, you know demonstrate and perform a lot of performing arts. But when it comes to English, we always had a challenge. But that is something that all those experiments helped a lot. And now there are these uh, under uh, you know, ten thousand children in the various classrooms. You know, every day experiment as they come back and share. And that's how the sharing from each other and experimentation is what making it stronger. And uh, that's what helps us to continuously refine and learning and teaching aids and so on. So. If you look at it, like you know, that has helped. Uh, what we kind of—it's not just about stories. We have a very, very—we uh, also believe in stories based on numbers, coming from a corporate and a particularly IT background. Um, so we believe a lot on strong processes and operations. So we make data tell our stories. So we collect data, and we don't want to actually complicate it too much. We keep it as a very simple way of assessing. Uh, of course, we took a lot from uh, Pratham's assessment. Uh, definitely, the ESL reports and the basic assessment. But then we added a lot of the element of question, which is for critical thinking. And so, you know, it's just, again the questions are like more story based. Sometimes at the lower levels, the teacher reads out the question for them, and then kind of administer. And at a little higher level, the children actually uh, kind of answer that. And it is not to measure the children. It's not to measure the children's performance. This learning level is very, very clearly our measurement to tell that whether we are doing our job right, and we tell that to the school management and to the teachers very clearly that it's our measurement. It's nothing to so the children are actually grouped, uh, of course, yes, uh, but then that is more to facilitate 
a learning that is we can't provide a personalized learning environment in the indian conditions you know like it's not that every child has got you know like a, 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 of course in some government schools the teacher to student ratio is extremely good but it's in mean, many schools in particular trust run schools is about one teacher to 30 35 students and so on and particularly for younger classes so we wanted we encourage them to group according to their uh, you know learning levels and some bit of mixture levels as well so that there's a lot of peer learning happens so we borrow a lot one of our mentor is a montessorian so we borrow a lot from montessori philosophy so that's that's what we try to do that year and um, so if you look at it uh, this is how uh, you know like uh, this is what our uh, classroom uh, typical looks like and what we storyify okay i mean this is basically how we tell story we start with the story and uh, according to the level if it is they are still at a level uh, i mean they still not introduced to a letter even then we start with stories which is based on concepts like colors vegetables because it's a basic montessori class colors vegetable fruits um occupation people around us you know how they help us so we tell the stories about that and we introduced uh, a concept that we're using a story and then a set of words and this words is not for the children to read and we introduce the words both in english and both in tamil and it's more for familiarity for the children to keep listening to the same and parallelly we start the journey of making them read and even before getting on to a reading we make them play a lot of uh, sensorial stuff like maze you know even some of our mazes are designed and all whatever content that we have created is creative commons license is available in the website anybody can use it take it and use it whatever they want um so they can um, even if they want to modify modify you know that is fine so that's the cc uh, license that we have put um so each of these mazes are also designed in the form of a letter basically if they complete the maze that they will trace a letter so and then we tell a story about a letter and then we make them uh, play maze and then say okay now what you trace now this is the letter u or this is the letter o or this is the letter b and so on so then it's not just about that we also make them play in play dohs and sand tracing and so on so first getting them making them very comfortable and also symbols the symbols which makes the letters the different um, cup symbol and then the mountain symbol the slanting man standing man uh, you know uh, sleeping man and so on and we tell stories about all these symbols and tell you know what is actually b is made of there is a man who is standing there and you see that there is this ears you know like the right side ear or the left side ear and so on and similarly like there is a k so there is a standing man and then there is a open beak you know beak of a bird so things like that so we tell introduce these symbols using stories first and then uh, make them you know even get into their letters and so on and each of these are actually different teachers have given us ideas and that's how all these are come right and then we move on to, uh, you know we play a lot of games like bingo word families so uh, every word is introduced as again a story uh, every word is told through a story and then they play up squash for letters words and so on So I'll stop uh, here probably because I don't know. I mean, it's thirty minutes is what you've told overall, correct, Colonel? Uh, yes, ma'am. If you have, if you have some more to present another ten minutes, it's okay. We can take twenty minutes of Q and A. Okay, fine. Okay. So and of course, like you know, uh, we we also develop a lot of critical thinking skills. Like uh, you using this, they form their own stories. They group the words and make their own stories. Why they group the words in a particular way? Oh, all this belongs to a you know like a temple, and all this belongs to a village, and so on. So they make their own concepts. Sometimes we give the concept and ask them to sort. Sometimes we give the word bank and then they kind of sort and so on. and a lot of with the moment they get into the word level and a sentence level or even before that when they are in a listening and speaking mode lot of circle time where they share story story telling story reading and lot of papa skit um, and so on so there is one part of analytical skills critical thinking skills that we need to develop and parallel along with stories so that's exactly what happens inside a classroom so i'll stop here okay and uh, and one important thing is that we ensure that most of these games are very traditional games you know it's like our childhood favorites like a pandi or a hopscotch or a snake and ladder or something where the children is familiar and the teachers are familiar with those kind of games so every story is followed with a game based on the story or game based on the words or the learnings and the sentences if it's a snake and ladder 
then the different points of decision which a particular character has taken you know, like do you think this boy did the right decision you know if he's taken the right decision he'll climb up a ladder and if he's taken a bad decision you know he'll fall back and doesn't mean that if you fall back you're going to get you again have a chance for climbing back and so on so we make it with a snake and ladder story for each of the critical thinking points of a story and so on. so every story is linked back to the game and it's very very important for empowering teachers and and uh, learning is inclusive it's not that we cater to actually uh, the people with disability by default but then we ensure it's a multi sensorial learning you know kinesthetic learning and as well as sensorial learning and so on so we have made some attempts uh, to also take it to blind schools uh, where we are trying to improve brain literacy because there's a specific request to us and we still have to do a lot of homework for that i mean i don't think that we can even talk about it but uh, definitely uh, you know hearing impaired children that people have come back and asked some of our stories and uh, are powerful and uh, the national institute of uh, people with uh, multiple disabilities nipma they are using it for adult education some of the videos um, it is uh, for people who have multiple disabilities as well so these are initial experiments i can't, we can't talk much about it and um, this is of course our uh, you know like um, blooms is our guru so we try and say both the cognitive domain and i don't have to tell much for the teachers here so how from a cognitive domain from remembering to understanding applying analyzing evaluating and creating we want our children to learn and move similarly uh, when it comes to values and what they need to observe and imbibe for the life it needs to start from receive respond value and also internally organize just to talk a story actually provides a lot of opportunity for uh, people to debate and not we are very open and there are new stories to take as an opportunity tell them do you think that they did the right thing and each child has a perspective so they understand and value that yes everybody appreciates a different part of the story at a different you know expression or a response from a particular character and they make their own value system you know they organize and say that okay fine for me this is better you know yes coming late and being punctual uh, you know so this is a value being punctual is a value but what if somebody is suffering on the road you know we build a story and say that you know, this kid actually wanted to before going back and delivering this banana to his father who asked the father asked the son to go and get a banana for puja the son goes out and he sees uh, somebody suffering and he feeds them and comes late first for the puja without the banana so that's a story and so what happens you know like it's And then uh, the father listens and realizes that the son is actually valued something helping others more than the punctuality or like following father's orders, and he is very happy about it. So things like that. So small, small stories where we also use it as an opportunity to debate, deliberate, discuss, and say we don't uh, kind of promote any particular value, but you know it's kind of where the kids can observe their own values from the story. So that's. that's what we believe is the foundation for lifelong learning and of course this is what i said we kind of group the children and according to the group we kind of uh, sum it up and uh, this is where we are now you know we uh, we have moved to we only work in tamil nadu and we have just crossed the border for one school in karnataka and of course in malaysia one school wanted to use it because they are teaching tamil children uh, and um, all our program including every content that we write is bilingual both english and tamil So it's about 450 plus reading coaches, 10,000 um, children, one or eight schools, and about 20 partners. So that's the story. Uh, um, and of course, there's a lot of story within a story. And you know, every day, if you see a classroom, you know, possibly one of our story sessions when we record, we'll be able to share. Initially, I thought that whatever we are going to tell as a story telling time today afternoon, I'll tell the same story. But then I thought it's you are all very matured audience. so i shifted and said that let's tell the story of the ko one itself so i'll stop you and uh, i'll pick up any questions from you thank you ma'am uh, the participants can post their questions in the chat window so that by the time ma'am answers one she'll have the next one ready so there are a couple of questions in the chat window ma'am can you are yeah i saw that learn teaching alphabets with the story okay thanks a lot jainti ma'am yes we also learned from teachers actually <laughs> you know when we went i mean i still owe that to one of my school partner okay um definitely a story demonstration wow wonderful shall i shall i start a story then uh definitely it is kata on rata.org i'll share you the link uh, okay and um, we only update uh, <laughs> once in a year so uh, otherwise our facebook is pretty active uh, so story demonstration okay yes 
So I've still not done, I mean, for the afternoon, I'm still doing my proofreading for the story uh, to my English language and other things. Please bear with me. Uh, I'll uh, share you the story after I completely, uh, I complete my story, I'll be able to share it with you. I'll tell a stall story. Okay. Um, and this is a story that, uh, you know, where uh, um, we have tried uh, kind of our own story. Um, So this is still going through editorial, so I mean, okay, this is actually a story that uh, we're planning to use. I mean, it's like uh, still getting edited for English and punctuation and so on. It's just uh, was penned down last night. <laughs> okay, so I hope this is getting shared. Is this getting shared or should I share it now? I think it's not getting shared. Just a minute, I'll share it. Yes. Okay, this is still in the making. <laughs> so please bear with me. We're still doing the editorial. We've not even seen the continuity between the thing, but um, this is what we're sharing now. Yes, it is visible. Yes. Okay, fun. This is a blog story especially made for lockdown time, okay? And welcome to the world of colors. And uh, what do we do in the lockdown time when we got announced? That is when we realized that, oh, there are so many neighbors in our own apartment complex and society, right? And that's what happened for this world of stories. All these colors, they started peeping out of their window. And remember, it is lockdown day one. And they all came to the balcony even before our honorable prime minister asked us to come and clap it on behalf of for all our, uh, you know, like that is when they realized even before the lockdown it happened, so they all started clapping and so on. So they all started saying, oh, there are so many people in my society. Each one started saying, hey, hello, I'm violent. I'm glad to meet. I'm blue. I'm green. I'm bright. Red is green. Yellow here. I'm orange. So they started having all these initial conversations like, hello, how do you do? I'm here, I exist, I live here. Oh, are you my neighbor type? Okay, so that's how they all started. So what happens then? As the days moved on, and uh, just a minute. As the days goes by, right? And they started saying, oh, I am Violet. You know what? I love to dream and imagine. Okay, and, uh, and then the blue came. They chatted more. You know, as the days moved on, they chatted more and more. And they started talking about each one. I am calm, I'm serene. You know, like, and then it's moved on. And they started boasting more slightly. So you see, I represent growth and life. I'm green. You see, everywhere, you know, wherever there is life, it's green. And the yellow came into the scene and said, it shouted more. I bring joy and sunshine to the world. And orange, it didn't want to be left out. It cried out more and said, I bring energy and warmth. What are you, what are you all talking? Then each one started crying out, shouting out to get each other's attention. And the red came in and said, I represent power and passion. See, however colorful the world was, they all started getting both because the lockdown was getting extended and the place was turned into a riot of colors, literally a riot of colors. While it started crying, I am rich and noble, I am cool and inspiring, shouted blue. I am healing and relaxing, cried out green. I am bright and intense. Can't you all see me? Hey, I am beautiful and attractive, man. Nobody can deny it. And the orange came and said, hey, come on, I am the most exciting. 
So each started boasting about their qualities and how good they are, and they didn't stop that. You know, the violet came inside and started pointing out everything. You see Brinjal, you see Flas, they pointed out everything and say, "Hey, people love me because I'm unique." You know, even in the vegetables, I'm very unique. Whether people like Brinjal to eat it or not, they like seeing me. And look at the colors. Our flowers, you know, violet flowers are always rare and unique. And I promote sensitivity and compassion. I really encourage people to be, you know, creative. And I inspire originality. I encourage inspiration and so on. So this time, violet started posting a lot, a lot. And then came the blue. Come on, don't tell me. You look at the sky. You look at the sky above you. And you look at the ocean. Everything, nature, you know, the sky and the ocean. It's all in blue, and even when the moon comes, so once in a while, you know, I, they call it as a special moon, saying it's a blue moon. Then people choose me to welcome baby boys, you know, because men always have a preference for my color. You look at the office spaces; I'm very well known to make them more productive. So each started telling about their qualities and started boasting more, pointing out different things. And even the blue came and said, "Do you know Emma Subbulakshmi, Emma?" More than her singing, a blue sari was famous, you know. So the blue started boasting, and the green just couldn't take it. Hey, come on! I bring balance and stability. You know what? I give calmness, and I'm the very life energy. I bring in vitality. Even when the mountains are described, many poets by saying that as though it's covered with a green blanket because I cover it, and it's my color which appears, and and so on and on and on. The yellow came and said, pointed to everything that is the gifts of Mother Nature and also inventions of mankind. You see the sunflower, you see the sun. Children love me the most. You know I get noticed all the time. If you have doubt, you just burn. Ask all the Atawalas in Chennai, right? I get noticed all the time, and they need all the attention. That's why they paint the, all the autos in yellow in my city. So it started boasting again. Then came the orange. It's it, that doesn't have to you know look for anything. It, Started showing different times of the day and different seasons of the year, starting from the autumn color to the sunset time. And you know, I grab all the attention. People wait to watch the sunset to see my color, and people wait to see that little window in the autumn so that the leaves of the trees change to my color and fall down before they fall down. And that is how I grab the attention. Red came. Now you don't have to talk about red, right? It is actually the king of all the flowers. The most common, most sought after for Valentine's Day, and across different customs, you look at Chinese celebrations, and across different celebrations, you ask the women, right, whether it is uh, Virat Kohli's and Anushka Sharma's, uh, Anushka Sharma's red saree was talked about. Why do you talk about Emma Subbulakshmi? You know, I'm whether it is like you know the old movies, how Sri Devi used to wear red sarees. You no, know, I was talked about most of the time. I bring luck. I make people feel confident. And important, you know. That's why they choose to wear me when they actually are in the wedding. So and on and on. So each one started telling the story, and then they got so bored. They fought till the lockdown 2.0, and the world of colors suddenly fell silent because they got so tired. They got literally tired. And from that calmness, that silent voice came. Here I am. What? It was a wake-up call, almost for all of them. Where are you? Who are you? Hey, I can't see you. Hey, come before I come in front of this man and show your face. Are you real? Yes, I am real, and you can see me in you all. And they got confused. At last, all colors shouted in one voice. Don't confuse us. Yes, I am white and pure, and from me you all came. But you are dull. I am so faint, invisible. You are so colorful and bright. It can't be. Can it be true? So we leave it here, and then we tell how the colors. This is a follow-on activity, which is for the Newton's color disc. How the different colors, the rainbow colors in a disc, when you actually spin it, it turns white. And also for a higher-level classes, for the prism, 
where a white light passes through and uh, the entire spectral light comes out of it and where every primary color is actually of a particular frequency and all the colors in between which has a unique frequency that the entire spectrum comes out and that's how we stop spectrum. Okay, so this is my trial as well for the afternoon. <laughs> we just penned it yesterday, so still editorial is going on. I've just asked my uh, sending it across. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for the patient listening. That was very nice, ma'am. <laughs> we have more questions here. Yes. <laughs> So each for even for mathematics, we tell a story. There are a lot of Pratham books. Okay, there are a lot of Pratham books for grammar. In fact, uh, one of our uh, you know team member Aru has spent. I'll just project that screen as well. He spent a lot of stories for each grammar. These are all picture conversations. So I'll also share that screen uh, quickly. Um, So if you see Story Weaver, I always uh, go and promote uh, Pratham Story Weaver wherever I go. So I hope it's showing. It is not yet presenting. Not yet presenting. Okay. Uh, I think. Uh, Maybe in the meantime, if there are any questions, you can take. No, it's, yeah, please, yeah. I'll do my entire screen, okay? So that. Yes. So this is the Story Weaver platform, and it's a, a beautiful platform from Pratham. As you said, that I know we uh, we don't want to reinvent anything. We always try to stand tall on the shoulders of others, and we want others to stand on our shoulders if we are tall enough. So these are picture conversation stories which my team has written for each of the topic. You know, for every conjunctions and prepositions and so on. So for every each one of this is actually a story that is written you know, before teaching a. Conjunction, it's a story. So we kind of introduce these words and so on. We use whatever uh, those are images available in Pratham and then make up stories on the top of that so that you know, we use all the illustrators, whatever pictures available. Uh, and then we tell a story to on a particular concept. We don't. So far, we are focusing more on language. Slowly, we started thinking about because of critical thinking, we also wanted to improve the scientific curiosity and therefore we are looking at stories for science as well. Lost in colors, Gayatri. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And please um, give any feedback. And we would be happy. You know, all our content on the site is actually available. And if you want for e-video lock also, we can make a separate copy and give it to your whatever server you want. And um, we uh, depend on, rely on each other a lot on all our partners. Pratham is our, Pratham and Story Weaver, Pratham Books and Story Weaver is our, no, I'm just beautiful partner when it comes to all the content and stories. It's a world of stories there. Um, and of course, all our implementation partners, you know, like very big names, like from Dan Foundation to HIH, all the learning centers, all the reading coaches, we train them in batches. Uh, and they are the ones who are taking it to all remotest villages. And most of the teacher volunteers, they themselves can't speak English. You know, they come with vernacular language. So to you, I say in English, and when in the afternoon, I'll completely be putting these English pictures, but tell the stories in Tamil. So we always use bilingual, and then try to relate the words from one language to another language. That's been our method. And thanks a lot, and thanks for the opportunity. Very nice. Ma'am, there are a, a couple of questions that have uh, sure. <laughs> Why Mist Black is beautiful. <laughs> thanks a lot. I love black. Okay. Uh, and black is my favorite color too, because uh, one is that uh, we wanted to uh, tell this story of rainbow colors and the spectral color, which is the science experiment. Okay, and black is actually the, exactly the opposite. You know, black there are additive colors and there are two theories on colors, which we are also I also learned. 
uh, when you mix up the paint using a paint pigments and mix it up, you don't get the white when you mix the colors. So in fact, we want to write another story where when you mix up all you know dark colors, you get a black and you get get a gray. So that's a different color. So it's for younger classes where uh, they can play with you know you can't go back and talk about the Newton's uh, disk and then the Newton's prism there. But to introduce story to a younger classes, we wanted to do that where they can play with the palette, color palette, and how they can get a black mixing up all colors or a gray mixing up all colors. So at that point of time, definitely I will introduce black man. And back, sir. Kupasami, sir. How can we add more stories for complicated and rigorous topic? You know, like you know, we always have this. You know, can't we teach even quantum mechanics using stories? <laughs> you know, that's something that we always uh, you know pond keep pondering. Okay, it is uh, as we go for higher classes. See, one thing that we have realized is that if we cannot storyify uh, your entire topic, you, know, you take a part of the topic. So even the very story that we told here, right? It is not just a science topic. If you look at it, this is also a story. Or coming out of the Advaita, I mean, if you also refer philosophy, it comes out of philosophy, saying that one of the philosophies where you say that every form of human existence comes from that absolute real. So it's, it's this is also a metaphor for that story, the very same color story. So that's a very advanced topic. So if you use what I realize, what he realizes, people use simple stories, but related to the most advanced topic. But I think it requires a lot of reflection and contemplation. Uh, definitely, we introduce songs along with story, ma'am, and uh, we do like to sing and dance. And um, many of the rhymes also we relate to. I mean, any existing rhymes and existing songs, we kind of uh, connect to that. And um, it's uh, it's a. Uh, in fact, uh, we start with movement. It is not sounds and symbol. Our next version starts with uh, you know movement. I have one of my favorite book here, saying that how movement education is important for the children. You know, even before they come into the play school. Um, so I'll show you my book. So okay, fine. I'll I'll send you the link later. It's a very very moment. It's because it's very very important to get the children to move, not just this dance. Even to children move, and how movement is very important. How it opens up different aspects of learning. Even reading barriers, many of the children build these barriers over a time because they have not been given an opportunity to a crawl or they don't have a space to crawl and they have not moved and so on. So we are doing some, you know, like uh, trying to introduce some movement early on. Stories for class 9 to 10. <laughs> now why? I mean, trigonometry, you know, how many stories you can tell about trigonometry. And many times that, uh, I mean, this is my wonderful book that I read, which is Iron Stewart. You know, the greatest mathematician. And more than teaching the mathematics concept, uh, he tells the history of mathematics. And history is, I've never enjoyed history in my history classes because I was always put to sleep. But of course, I rested a lot. But history is so powerful. And even the history of mathematics or history of science can tell a very powerful story. Uh, I happened to read the IGCSE books uh, before introducing periodic table. And how each of these inventions actually led from one to another. It's a very beautiful story. Okay. And uh, before jumping onto a periodic table or before jumping on to you know, the toughest topics of you know, how algebra and geometry are related, how one kind of one side of the thing started, another started, how it started getting related to each other. Um, it's a book is called Taming the Infinite from Ian Stewart. So, uh, and like, uh, and there is also something called as a, I think it's the beauty of, um, I forgot the name. I mean, which is there in Amazon as an online version also is there. So these are some of the kind of the books to, I think we'll have to get into, introduced to science topics or mathematics topics. First, we'll have to understand about the history of this mathematics. Even short history of everything from Bill Brazen is a beautiful history of the entire science. It's a very beautiful book, you know, how it tells. And it's actually a non-science, he's not a scientist himself, the Bill Brazen book of brief history of everything. So these kind of stories really go a long way. I think we'll have to keep reading and refer the stories. First, if we start enjoying the stories, and we'll, we'll make stories, it's not a problem. And how can one contribute? And of course, ma'am, you all are teachers and educators. You know, if you go and, you know, we'll be so happy if you are able to take any of our content and take it in your classes, that will be the biggest contribution. And you can always contribute back, you know, to the story we were in Pratham. I mean, that's a, our part, I mean, another organization. But, we can always share with you our content, you give us feedback, you can contribute. 
can go and take it, take classes for teachers. So in any way, we are certainly planning for other states. <laughs> um, uh, see, we start, see, the, the challenge that we have is uh, we have to be very thorough. Only one person in my team, uh, she's, uh, I mean, she got married to a Kannadika family and therefore she speaks Kannada and she speaks Hindi. So there is only one person in my team who speaks four languages. All others are either two languages or three languages. So we need to come back and see. And so what we do is we give the English alone. If you're still interested, we still give the English part alone. For the other vernacular language part, we ask the respective local teams to take care of it. Um, whether it works for all ages and professions, Ramonison, I would definitely say yes. Now we add this doubt, right? Uh, we initially thought, are we looking very silly even before taking these stories to the teachers? But one conference that I had is even to the CEOs, I could sell through stories and get funding. So <laughs> now we go back and tell a story of, you know, we work in preventing avoidable blindness as part of my regular work. The first thing is I always tell a story how this child has actually, this Dia, uh, you know, how she was actually get ridiculed as a Kani and she thought it's a nickname and then realized that she's actually a sweet type. And then our parents were absolutely from a poor background and how this particular school screening program helped to identify that she had a problem and she got that remedy and how she's like, you know, bubbling with joy. So I tell this story because it's, it's not about, you know, the stories is just for telling, right? You know, we also, um, many times, sometimes our work gets very boring and monotonous. And it's also why it's boring because you know it's a lot of stories that we listen about people suffering and so on, and you can only do so much in a foundation with the little resource that you have. You don't have you know endless. We don't have an akshaya patra for money or a time, right? But then when we listen to stories like this, when they come back and say even the little impact, that really motivates us. We tell that a lot, and that really works for professions. Marketing. You look at every advertisement is a powerful storytelling. You know, like all the best ads are best stories which are actually conveyed type um hearing a story <laughs> the child reads a story which was more interesting for that child okay i think both as the beauty okay uh, first they need to listen um because they get immersed in your modulation and and they just close and all your sounds makes them imagine next to when they get onto the books right and once they have the proficiency in reading that too and uh, even now, my daughter is a big fan of Agatha Christie. And um, you know, every uh, narration or the description of the character or a description of the uh, ambience, uh, you know, they let them imagine themselves. So uh, it's actually like you know, they make a create a world within themselves by just listening to a story or reading a story. And both is a very powerful media. I don't think it's one over the other. Uh, mathematics author, it is Ian Stewart. I'll write it down. Taming the infinite. Um, uh, I mean, it's a. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm still. I I I I I rented it from British Council, and uh, you know they stopped all these books. I'm still looking for this book. Uh, Taming the infinite is. Uh, I think it's only a hard copy bound book is available. I and Stuart, all these books are good, wonderful. And the other book that I mentioned about is Bill Brazen, which is the short history of everything. A brief history of everything, I think. I um, mean, something like that, the name. I'm not very sure about the name. Wow, Nitya, you've written uh, stories for chemistry and implemented in class. Please share. OK, and any of these stories that we implement, you know, put it back into an open platform like Story Weaver, right? Because others can use it. I mean, it's not our platform. It's a platform for another organization's Pratham. But I have highest regard for, for Pratham books, basically. The story we were is that that we put our content, okay. So and uh, only our stories we put there. The other content we put it, uh, the lesson plans and aids and teaching aids and all that it is available in our website. We are also talking to put it in the national teachers platform like Diksha and others. It's still in the discussion, and um, we are still revising our content a lot because we still keep curating. As I said, that we are perpetually experimenting by taking feedback from everyone. So with all that, probably by, uh, uh, you know, before we start this next academic year, we'll make one major release again. I think I covered all the questions. I'll uh, go back again just to check once. Yes, I've covered your question. Um, complicated and rigorous topics. Yes, with Abhilash, I think I just mentioned. 
I still, I think I'll be satisfied when I'm able to tell a story on quantum mechanics one day. <laughs> but I think even there, there is a documentary on Amazon Prime, if you can watch. I think it's Kilegi or something. Some uh, is a professor. The way in which he tells or uh, explains quantum mechanics is a very beautiful way of narration. Um, I'll probably pick it up, that uh, full thing, and then share it with Anand so that he can share with you all. And Chitra ma'am, yes, I talked uh, about uh, songs. The stories for class 9 to 10. I did mention about these periodic tables and trigonometries and um, uh, other states. Yes, I think we covered. Any more questions? Yes, we have covered. Uh, yes, yeah. We have also have we also have somebody sharing the book, History of Thanks. Everything. Yeah, short history of nearly everything, 2003. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. Yes. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Actually, yeah. So uh, this has been a wonderful session, and uh, it has given us great ideas uh, about how storytelling can be used to achieve various uh, goals. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. That is what we can take away from uh, this wonderful presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank I you. Too. I mean, we'll be more open, uh, Anant. Like, if you want to take, you know, any of our content anywhere inside your box or within our offering, uh, I, that's the reason why I also invited Kannan. Uh, you can connect with you if you if you're interested. I mean, it's not thing. We really want to take it up. So we can actually share a lot of our content or whatever it is in another detailed session as well. We can walk that through. I mean, that will not be a story, but that will be a regular session. Thank you. Thank you very much for saying that. We'll get back in touch and uh, take it up. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, participants. If you have any questions further, you can write to us. We will uh, yeah. connect to you. Available on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, lady, anyway. Yeah, thanks. Yes, yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Beginning with the level. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it.